So we have the part two, economics, January 2023. What? Yeah, the first question. So which one of the following is the role of the World Trade Organization, WTO? Uh, writing of debt, debt. No, they are not writing of debt. It's not within their capacity. They don't write of debt. Settling trade disputes. This is their role and their function. So the answer is B. C, increasing trade barriers. No, they rather reduce trade barriers. That is why they are established. Paying subsidies to producers. This will increase protectionism. So it's not theirs to do. Clear. Go to question two. B. Which one of the following is an example of a supply side policy to increase output? Increasing income tax. When you increase income tax, that's fiscal policy. It's not supply side policy. Are you with me, please? Increasing interest rate. That is monetary policy. It's not supply side policy. Increasing the school living age. That's the answer anyway. Because when you increase the school living age, it means number of people will, will spend, they will spend more time in school and that will allow them to attain more knowledge. Do you get it? And output will definitely increase. Increasing business taxes, this will reduce output because consumer firms will be, uh, they will be witnessing uh, falling in their profits. So they won't be able to increase output, clear. Yeah. So the answer is C. Question C, question C. What is meant by the term economies of scale? Economies of scale is a cost advantage, which are, which, which results from the expansion of the firm. Okay. Yeah. Question D. Describe one advantage of free trade for consumers. Affordable prices, as, comp as competition will increase due to free movement of goods and services. Affordable prices as comp okay, yes? Uh, I hope they will have more options with cheaper prices. Yeah, affordable prices is fine. It's the same. Okay, so go on. We have E now, right? Yes, one. It says show, well, uh, figure one shows the income tax rates for the UK and the stories are there. It says calculate the net pay in pounds for Sophia. You advise to show your working. So, it says Sophia is good, Sophia earns 35,000 pounds, but she's going to pay 20% on tax or tax on 22,500. So we need to take 20% of 22,500. Whatever we get, we take it away from 35,000. Do you get what I did now? Yeah. So it is 20% of 22,500, which is 4,500. The, the earnings of Sofia, which is 35,000, you less 4,500 from it. So that's the net pay. Is it clear? So the net pay is 30,500. Do you get that? Yes. Okay, good. We move on. Question eight. It's a using diagram below, draw the effects of introduction of the tariff on the equivalent price and quantity of Australian value. Label the new curve and the new equivalent price and the new equivalent quantity. So an increase in tariffs will bring about an increase in cost of production. And an increase in cost of production because price is constant, means that the quantity supply would reduce, shifting the supply curve left -right. Begin about contraction, the demand curve. Begin about the high equilibrium price. Is it clear? Yeah. So go to question G. So for question G. It talks about uh, seasonal unemployment. So there's no one reason why some people in the tourism sector might suffer from seasonal unemployment in a country such as France. But think about seasonal unemployment. Seasonal unemployment occurs when it is expected that certain people won't have employment in a specific period during the year. It is expected that some people would not have job, would not be employed at a certain period within a year. That is seasonal unemployment. It's an expectation to get that. So you want to say something? No. Okay, so I hope people in the tourism sector might suffer from seasonal unemployment in a country like France because they are only needed during holiday seasons. So why would they suffer? They will suffer because they are only employed, you know, 
demand for labor uh, is a derived demand. So it means they are only going to be needed, their services, going to only, their services are going to be needed during a specific period, which is during holiday periods in France. So as a result of that, as soon as the holiday period is over, it is expected of them not to have a job. That is seasonal unemployment. The man, the man. Then their income level would fall. Is it clear? Correct. So that's about seasonal unemployment. We move on. We go to question H. Are you there? Yes. Okay. For question H, it says, uh, it's about current account. Sorry. Okay. Question H. We said analyze the benefit of a current account surplus for a country such as Australia. So when I talk about current account surplus, current account surplus implies that an economy is having exports that exceeds or higher export that exceeds imports. So I wrote current account surplus implies that an economy is having higher exports, higher export values than imports. That is surplus. Uh, I thought for government revenue coming to expenditure. No, that is fiscal. That is fiscal surplus. Well, it's not the same. Government revenue exceeds government expenditure. That is fiscal surplus. Fiscal. Because yeah. government revenue comes from taxation. Government spending comes from taxation. Revenue, revenue comes from taxation, and that is what government spends. So if what government spends exceeds what it receives in terms of tax revenue, that is fiscal deficit. If government spending is lesser than government revenue, that is fiscal surplus. But here we're talking about current account surplus which is about trading, export and import. Taxation is about, do you get it? Yeah, yeah. For taxation, that is where government will spend from and that is where government gets its revenue. So that's fiscal, export, that's for the budget. Export and import is about current, current account. account. So when you have current account surplus, it means the export values of that, the export value of that country exceeds the import value of that country. I think you understand the difference. Yeah, now? I got Good. it. So for current account surplus, like I said earlier, it's surplus uh, exports exceeding imports, right? Great. According to the data, they said, well, the surplus is around 18.1 billion, right? So it means that it means that Australia will benefit from higher employment rates. Definitely, if the current account, if there's increasing exports in the country, if there's an increasing export in the country, it means that the country is doing well. So that means the export firms, or the exporting firms in that economy. Would need would have would need more workers to meet up with the demand for goods and services or the demand for their goods. That also means the GDP for the country is also increasing. Yeah, but before going to the GDP, here yeah, we're talking about yeah, the GDP will increase. But let's come back to increasing export within an economy. Increasing export means that the export is in demand, is high in demand. That means foreign customer needs more of exports. So exporting firms in that economy would have increased employment opportunity. Do you get the point I'm making here? So higher employment, okay, I wrote, this would mean that Australia would benefit from higher employment as higher sales and export may create job opportunity. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. So higher employment rates will increase the output of Australia and that will help the economy to grow. Do you get how it works now? Yeah. Higher employment rates will increase output because employment, increasing employment will increase the GDP of that country and the output of that country. But you have to put it this way. As soon as export is increasing in an economy, it means exporting firms would have to to you know to continue to produce more because the they demand for their goods are increased are increasing. They will need to get more workers. So they will need to employ more workers to meet up with the increasing demand. Is export clear now about current accounts? So we'll go to question two. Are you there? So question two, they said, money earned from foreign tourists visiting Canada is shown in Canada's current account on the balance of payment as the first one, visible exports. When we talk about visible exports, we're talking about trading goods, trading goods, trading goods that are leaving the country. That's visible export. That means goods are leaving the country for, to foreign customers. That is vis visible exports. Visible imports, trading goods coming into the country. That means the country is buying from foreign businesses. Trade in goods coming into the country. That is visible imports. Now, invisible exports. 
Invisible export implies that services are rendered to foreign customers in your country. In as much as they are foreigners, it is export of service. Do you get it now? Yeah. So a Nigerian, a Nigerian tourist in Libya means that Libya has done what? Export of service. Do you get it now? So invisible export means services are rendered to foreign customers. Services rendered to foreign customers are visible, invisible exports. Invisible imports. These are services rendered to rendered by foreign businesses. So you traveling abroad, you going to UK. It's an invisible import for UK. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, I got it now. So I mixed up the. It's because Mr. I thought that was the what's it called the tourism in your country when you're selling to them, it counts as a, as an import because you're. No. It's not. It's not in as much as the services is rendered by a Libyan to a Libyan in Libya to a Nigerian in Libya. It is foreign. It is. Invisible okay. exports. Okay, I got it. Do you get it? Yeah, so that it. means I have imported a service from Libya. So okay. as a Nigerian, it will be invisible import for us. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Any question about that now? Yeah. So we'll go on. So go to question B, right? Which one of the following is likely to help protect the environment? An increase in fines. And that's the answer, because this may reduce negative externalities. An increase in fines, that's the answer. It reduces negative externality, clear? Yeah. An increase in pollution permits. This allows more pollution. A reduction in regulation. This encourages pollution. A reduction in the pollution of parks. This will reduce the number of areas that are protected. Clear? Yeah. All right, good. Go on to question C. Take one possible disadvantage of economic growth. If there's economic growth, economic growth may result into inflationary pressure. Inflation. Okay. Not only that, resource depletion. Okay. One more. Yes. Another problem about economic growth is um, poverty, right? Income inequality. It's, it's poverty, right? Economic growth. Yes, no. He wouldn't use poverty at the beginning. He might talk about income inequality because the rich might be richer. And the poor will get uh, Yeah, poor. so it's better you use income inequality. Do you understand? Because when the economy is growing, it is expected of the economy, it is expected of, it is expected to have more income. Do you understand? But most of the time, when the economy is growing, it is mostly, you know, it is mostly beneficial to the rich. Than the poor, but you wouldn't say it is it's going to lead to poverty. No, it might lead to income inequality, not poverty. Because when you talk about poverty, we're talking about no improvement. But this is economic growth. There is improvement. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. So move on to question A. What is meant by the term privatization? Privatization is the transfer of state-owned businesses to the hands of private individuals, firms, or group of individuals. Clear. Yeah. Go to question B. Are you there? Yes. We have the case study. They said, explain one possible reason why the Scottish government wants to reduce poverty and inequality. The Scottish government may want to reduce poverty and inequality because it enables low-income earners or the disadvantaged people in Scotland to be able to have access to more goods and services. This will bring about a better living standard. Is it clear? Yeah. Go to question. F he said, maybe at the remaining three stages of the economic cycle, we have the boom, we have the downturn, we have depression, oh, then we have recovery, or recession, oh, yeah. Yeah. then we have recovery, then that's all. Is it clear? Yeah. We go to question G. Are you there? We have the case study. He said, with the reference to the data above and your knowledge of economics, I said, likely in part on the demand for US exports to Australia. After the depreciation of the US dollar. Depreciation of the currency occurs when the floating exchange rate, when the floating exchange, exchange rate for value, when the floating exchange rate value of a country's currency falls relative to other currency. That is depreciation. Clear. Yeah. Depreciation of the US dollars makes the price of exports to Australia become cheaper. 
the depreciation of the US dollar will make the exports to Australia become cheaper. Yes or no? As a result, more goods will be purchased from us, from America. This will increase the value of coins accounts of America. Clear. Yeah. As US exports become cheaper, Australia may be able to trade with the US in terms of machinery, vehicle, medical instruments, which are set, stated in the data. And this may improve the trade relationship between both countries. So it might bring about improvements in trade relationship, trade relationship in courts. I was going to say globalization, but I don't think it's no, as much as no. much. Yeah. It's about it's more of trade relationship. So because it's only between two countries. Two countries, yes. That point is clear, right? Yeah. However, there are other factors that determine trade relationships, such as the quality of goods. If the quality of goods in America isn't better compared to other countries, Australia might not trade with the US. So it's not all about exchange rates. It's not about exchange rates. Is okay? Yeah. Go to question three. Are you there? Yes. What was the rate of inflation if the CPI of a country rose from 120 to 150? That was 150 minus 120 divided by 120 multiplied by 100. Okay. 25%. You get that? Yeah. Okay. So go to question B. How did you do yours? Yeah, I did the same as what you did. Okay. So go to B. Which one of the following is an impact of globalization? B, right? Yes. He said, which one of the following is an impact of globalization? Higher prices. No. Higher prices. No, globalization increases competitiveness. So if globalization increases competitiveness, it is expected that price should fall. So it is not A. Closing of traditional industry. Yes, because MSCs may have may have competitive advantage or edge over the domestic businesses. As a result, it may reduce the profitability of domestic firms, shutting them down. Do you get that? So the answer is B. Reduce choice. No, globalization increases choices. And increase cost of communication. No way. Globalization is possible because there is an effectiveness in communication. Therefore, cost should be reduced. Cost of provision should reduce. Is it clear? Yeah. Any question about globalization? No. no. Go to question. Yeah, explain one likely impact. Okay, are you there? Yes. They said there's still one likely impact on UK tax revenue from rising unemployment rates. Rising unemployment rates will reduce income levels. Yes or no? As a result, may lead to a fall in the in government revenue through income taxation. You get the point. Yeah. Rising unemployment will reduce income level. As a result, may lead to a fall in government revenue through income tax. As less people will have, you know, have they, they don't have jobs. So when people don't have jobs, so it's expected of them not to pay taxes. So tax revenue through income tax would reduce for the government. So is it clear? Yeah. And I like, with reference to the data and above and your knowledge of economics, assess the likely benefit of lowering taxes to reduce it. No, you just do that, right? Yeah. Are we in D or E? D. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Lithium is used, okay. Analyze how business activity can damage the environment in countries such as Chile. I go, business activities such as mining of lithium may bring about pollution. That's the first point there. Mining of lithium may cause different kinds of pollution, such as noise, visual, air, and water pollution. Mining of lithium may reduce water accessibility to humans, as it uses a lot of water, which was approximately to be around 2 million liters per ton to make lithium. Is it clear? Yeah. Go to question B. Are you there? Yes. He said, with reference to the data above and your knowledge of economics, assess the likely benefit of lowering taxes. He said, assess the likely benefit of lowering taxes to reduce unemployment for a country such as Spain. Lowering taxes, for, for example, income tax means that disposable income for the workers will likely increase. So when government lower taxes, for example, in income tax, it means a, low, a cut in income tax will increase disposable income. Yes or no? Yeah. So as disposable income increases, the spending power of consumers will increase. That means the demand, the demand for goods and services will increase in Spain, especially in the, in the tourism and commerce sector based on the data. 
Okay. This will increase revenue in those sectors, thinking about workers being retained or more workers being employed to meet the increasing demand. So this is likely to reduce unemployment. However, a cut in tax, which brings about higher demand, may lead to inflationary pressure, especially if demand exceeds supply. You get it that way. Yes. Also, the confidence level of consumers might reduce as around 4 million are out of employment. This may reduce spending as people might prefer to save. Therefore, a lower tax might not be effective. I'm going to explain it again. If government cuts tax, you want to say something? No, just the, the consumer confidence part. Because... Yes. You know, it's not just about government cutting taxes. Demand for goods and services are also based on consumers' confidence. So what is the confidence about? Being optimistic about the future. So if consumers are not optimistic about the future, no matter what, how less the tax is, they won't still spend. They would rather save. Do you get the point now? Yes, you know, well, here, we're talking about how a cut in tax would increase employment opportunity. A cut in tax means disposable income should increase. People should start spending so that firms will receive more revenue. Demand will increase. Then firms will be able to employ more workers. That is, the, that is the motive behind this government policy. But the point now is it does not really only depend on the cut in tax. Spending, consumption depends on consumer confidence too. So if the 4 million people are out of jobs, so a lot of people will still be panicking. Like we might lose our jobs too. So we should rather not spend, we okay. should save. So a cut in income tax here might not be effective. That is the point I'm making. Is it clear now? Yeah. Question four, are you there? Yes. Question four, a. it's a calculate to two decimal places. The rate of unemployment for Mexico in the third quarter of 2020, we are advised to share a workshop. Rate of unemployment is number of unemployed divided by the labor force multiplied by 100. Number of unemployed divided by the labor force or the workforce multiplied by 100. So it is 2769491 divided by 5101033 multiplied by 100. It is 5.43%. 5.43%. So you did the number, you did the labor force over the unemployment. Number of unemployed. Are you not calculating for rate of unemployment? You are calculating for the rate of unemployment, right? Rate of unemployment. No, sir, the opposite, but I got the same answer. How can I get the same answer? It's not possible. I got 5.43. It's not possible. I did, six, I did the 51 million over 2 million. It's not possible. Times 100, and I got the same answer. No. How? How did I get the same answer? Then? I don't know. It's, uh, it's one. It is number of unemployed divided by labor force multiplied by 100. I miscalculated. So it is number of unemployed divided by labor force multiplied by 100. So it is 5.43. Yeah. Next one. It so said, an increase in wages in Mexico. This is question B. So in Mexico, the minimum wage was increased by this. So analyze the impact of increasing wages on inflation in Mexico. The question says we should analyze the impact of increasing wages on inflation. So an increase in wages in Mexico will bring about an increase in the cost of production for firms, especially for those who are already paying the minimum wage. So because the minimum wage has increased, now you have to pay it as a firm. Firms have to pay. That will increase their cost of production, yes or no? Good. So firms may pass on the wage increase to customers in Mexico, leading to, lead, uh, leading to higher prices of goods and services. And that will bring about cost push inflation. You know, it is about the impact of increasing wages to inflation. So here we have to talk about different types of inflation here. Cost, cost push inflation here because the cost of production will increase for firms as a result of paying increasing wages. As a result of paying wages. For demand for now. Yeah, we have to talk about it. So increasing wages may increase the demand for goods and services. 
bringing about inflationary pressure if demand exceeds supply. This will bring about demand proliferation. Is it clear? So it's going to lead to cost push inflation because the cost of production for firms will decrease. It might also lead to demand pull inflation because demand for goods and services will increase because the disposable income has increased in the economy. So that will bring about demand pull inflation. So a high wage, a high wage rate will bring about demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Is it clear? Go to question. Question C. All right. So they said uh, that is the case study. Let's go down to the question. They said, with reference to data above and your knowledge of the economies, evaluate the effectiveness of monetary policy in increasing total output in countries such as Mexico. First, what is monetary policy? Monetary policy is the use of money supply and interest rates by the government to achieve economic growth. Because here we're talking about economic growth. You get it? Yes. If it's about inflation, we say to stabilize price, we have to use what is being used for. The, the bone of contention here is economic growth, right? Yes. Output, total output. That's growth. So that's why I said monetary policy is the use of money supply and interest rates by the government to achieve economic growth. Clear. Yeah. Mexico Central Bank can use the expansionary monetary policy, lower interest rates, as the highest rate was 8.25. In 2019, it was 8.25. Above, look at it here. Is 8.25. Before 8.5. 8.25. Yes. That's, that was the highest in 2019. And it has reduced to 4.25. In 2020. Do you get that? Yeah. That's what's called expansionary monetary policy. So this policy will increase borrowing as the cost of borrowing becomes cheaper. Expansionary monetary policy, like a low interest rate, will increase borrowing because the cost of borrowing reduces. Borrowing becomes cheaper. Okay. Firms and consumers will have the incentive to borrow more. Firms, firms may be able to invest in capital goods, leading to increasing output. While consumers may be able to borrow more to increase their spending, this will increase the GDP. Clear. Good. However, lower interest rates may increase demand but bring about inflationary pressure, like demand for inflation. That's the problem there. Also, there are other policies that can be used to achieve economic growth, such as supply side policy and fiscal policy. To achieve economic growth, yes, you can use supply side and, and fiscal policy. So, which means the Mexican, the Mexican government should not only concentrate on one policy for improved GDP. So you should use different policies. Because if you concentrate on one policy, it might bring about government failure. You should spread your risk. You spread it, spread your risk. Try to think outside, try to think as if you don't have just one box. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. So that ends uh, paper two for January, 2023.